song um, movie called Perfect Blue. There's a shit lot of <laughs> red in it. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark's movie reviews, a spoiler-free discussion detailing the good, the bad, and the downright ridiculous of anime movies. I'm your host, Alex, joined tonight by our uh, poster extraordinaire, Natai. You know, you know what I feel when I'm blue? I feel that I'm blue. And as you can tell, we also have our chivalry of Shota Shotaro. I hate it here. I was wondering if I should <laughs> save it for. I, I was with? wondering if I should save it for the intro. I was like, yeah, yeah, I am, I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, start strong tonight. I, I expect nothing less. But uh, we are tonight. We have gotten together to do a movie review of Perfect Blue. Um, so before I actually get started with this, uh, I do want to mention a few things. So, um, we, so we've been doing our movie, movie reviews for a while and yes, they are usually spoiler free. Um, but we're going to start changing up how we do our movie reviews. So in the past, we have all just decided amongst ourselves, which movies to do these reviews for, um, Going forward, I mean, we're still going to be doing that, but we're also going to be announcing ahead of time which uh, review or which movie we're going to be reviewing next for our movie reviews. And we're aiming to do at least one every two months, maybe one a month if we can. Uh, but uh, I actually announced because I chose this one. I announced that we were going to be doing this on our Discord server, which if you haven't, uh, look down in the description below and join us there. There's a lot of great people there. A lot of great conversations have been had. Uh, it's just it's a great time a lot overall. of memes yes a lot of memes um and we also have uh watch parties where we do watch some of these movies that we end up reviewing um but going forward we're going to go in like of a round robin kind of way between the four of us choosing which uh anime movie we're going to re be reviewing next and that'll be announced at the end of each movie review going forward so stay tuned at the very end of this where i'll let you know what the next movie we're going to be reviewing is but for tonight i have chosen perfect blue uh and that is what we're going to be talking about so let's get into the uh the more the technical details first a uh, little bit of introduction mm. into perfect blue so perfect blue is a, a movie that was directed by the late great satoshi kon uh, his other works include uh, such wonderful favorites as millennium actress tokyo godfathers paranoia agent and paprika which is a movie of his that myself and show have done a uh, review of in the past which you should go check out mm-hmm uh, the anime movie itself was uh, written by Sadayuki Murai. Uh, it is based on a novel called Perfect Blue Complete Metamorphosis, which was written by Yoshikazu Takeuchi. Uh, the film itself was produced by Studio Madhouse, the Mad Men. Yeah. <laughs> the Mad Men at Madhouse. Um, the film itself was first screened uh it wasn't even first screened in japan as a matter of fact it was uh screened at the fantasia international film festival on august 5th 1997 it got its first release in japan on february 28th 1998 so is it even uh, anime if wow. it didn't premiere in japan <laughs> where is the, where is question. the fantasia mm. film festival I believe it is in Canada. Not this. Not me not knowing my own you culture. You damn Canadians. I hate it here. I, I know, right? The Canadian doesn't know this. Uh, I Don't, don't, let me look it up real quick. I, I should have written that down, to be perfectly honest. Not this. Um, Yes, uh, yes. It was, the Fantasia Film Festival is in Montreal, Canada. Montreal, yes. okay, that's not Canada, so it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, well. what do you mean it's not Canada? <laughs> There's like you a culture it war. First. It's like a Canadian joke that Quebec is in Canada. Just... You I mean, culture whore. Is, the, is that wrong? Is it wrong? Since I don't live in Quebec, then no, it's not wrong. <laughs> but yes, um, it did first premiere in, in Canada. Um, the, the film was made on a budget of 90 million yen. Uh, that equates to roughly 830,442 US dollars. Um, that number, that's however, not very much. No, it's not. And that number is not adjusted for inflation. So that's the amount that it was made for in the, the mid to late 90s. Um, I couldn't find a figure that was adjusted for inflation. In fact, none of the figures you're about to hear are adjusted for inflation. Um, 
Its total box office revenue uh, totals seven hundred and sixty-eight thousand fifty U.S. dollars. That is across the U.S. Ooh. and the U.K. Uh, really? Yeah. Um, wow. Hold on, though. Um, so this this total <laughs> does actually include both its initial theatrical release in both the U.S. and U.K. and theatrical re-releases. Um, over the course of its lifetime, it has gone on to earn just shy of two million U.S. dollars in worldwide home video sales. Um, the, this number includes uh, a blast from the past VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray sales. Man, VHS were great. <laughs> um, I mean, probably not, but yeah. I'm old enough to remember using VHS exclusively. Yes, I'm well aware, Nitai. I mean, me too, but sure. <laughs> and the film has a total runtime of 81 minutes, so not particularly long for an anime movie. So, let's actually get into some of the uh, the technical details. Let's talk about the art and animation. Um, I don't think there's any way to say this except the the art design is um, it's a product of its time. <laughs> it's it's definitely rough around the edges, but man, does this movie compensate for that with like incredible directing, right? Mm. For sure. Like the beginning of the movie is like a bit rough. Like you see this like shot that's like going over this crowd, and it doesn't look incredible, right? But then no. as the scene progresses, and then you see like certain camera angles that are like really, really interesting and unique. And then you're sort of like picking up like, oh, okay, this is like a really specific way this guy's got to direct. Um, and then it definitely ramps up in intensity as the movie goes along. But it definitely is a bit rougher on the edges. So this movie is about... Still holds up though. Mm-hmm. It is about like idols and celebrities and so there are some like choreographed dancing and surprisingly the the dance scenes were really well animated I, they were really enjoyable yeah. to watch so at least it's not cg dance scenes which we have in every other idol show currently um so it's already better than the current anime I want to talk about that for just a second. Like, this is another example of... A, there's there's another great... Uh, there's an OVA series in the mid-90s called Gunsmith Cats, which is all completely hand-drawn. <laughs> um, like, it, this is a great example of why, like, hand-drawn is better than CG. Yeah, it's more labor-intensive, sure, but it still holds up. Like, obviously, the art style is 100% a product of its time, and it hasn't aged very well, if I'll be perfectly honest. But it still looks really compelling. Like, I like that it aesthetic. It is. But for the animation with the hand-drawn animation, you just can't beat it. It doesn't really age. I mean, yeah, it may not. It's because it's like, I think it's 24 frames per second. It looks a little slow. But still, I mean, I, it ages so much better than CG. Like, CG from even five or ten years ago looks dated by today's standards already. Mm-hmm. Well, to be specific, I wasn't particularly impressed by like the quality of the art or animation it's just that the way that they like choreographed the dances and also Mm. there were a lot of like modeling scenes and the way that the director like posed the character and the way that he Mm. like made the actors during the acting scenes how they moved just the movement felt really realistic and it felt really detailed so it wasn't like the quality like was good. Yeah. It was just like the details were very, I don't know, appropriate for the scenes. It really yeah. made me feel like I was seeing an actual like live action dance or like actual actors. So, yeah, I, the direction I, I, is I totally superb, agree. Yeah. I totally agree. But this is and again, this is just another another great uh, example of why hand drawn animation is better. I mean, yeah, the. It fits, but it just holds up. Do we want to like set the scene for like sort of the premise of the movie? Uh, we'll get to that in just a second when we talk about the the narrative. But yeah, it, so again, along with the art design, the character designs, right? My God, are some of these characters ugly? <laughs> Honey, I mean, it's very much like leans to some. Like, I mean, there's like this manager character who looks kind of ugly, but it sort of feels like. A certain archetype, right? I mean, of course, you have the uh, the stalker character, which on purpose is like disturbing. Uh-huh. 
Um, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, and, and it does a really great job because every time you see him, he's like, "Oh God, he coming." <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I mean, like telegraphing who's the bad guy with how ugly they are is kind of like not great. Story it is cliche. Writing, but... I don't think I don't think the character design is like a really standout element of this movie. It's just no. Like, I mean, okay. it makes sense. Again, they're like it's very grounded in reality to some extent. Okay, but I mean, so like... the female manager, the distance between her eyes, I just couldn't get over it. I just, that just bugged me. I know. They were just so far She apart. looks like a fucking fish. They, she, oh my god, and the, and the main character had a pet get into fish, it. honey. Yeah, was that on see? purpose? Maybe Easter she is egg? a fish. Oh my god, she is the she's fish. A, she's, she's a fish person. She's oh my god, a fish person. Lizard man confirmed. So something else uh, that is used lot, utilized a lot in the cinematography of this, and I, I just attribute this 100% to Satoshi Kon's just brilliance is the copious use of jump cuts, especially from the midpoint mm. of the movie on, which is used in well, most of the time to uh, show to the audience, just how mentally unstable the main character is becoming. It's so good. Cause it works like, really it, well. <laughs> it puts you in the same mindset as the main character, because you are also like, kind of like, you feel this like very jarring feels like wait where am i what am where why am i here yeah for like what the fuck like he fucks with time and space so well he does and you start questioning just as much as the main as as a viewer you start questioning just as much as the yeah. main character is like is what just happened is it is it just real is it in the character's head and it's so clever yeah. how it like sort of sets it up because at the beginning of the movie the, like the first scene is it cuts between her in her last performance and then her going on her day and like buying groceries and you have all these jump cuts it's like oh that's that's neat but then again like as the movie goes on like the jump cuts become more like intricate and just fucks with you mentally it's like whoa hold on where what's even going on i also love how so the the main character is well part of her job is she's becoming an actress and i like the jump cuts that are used when she's like going about her day and like everything seems nice and then all of a sudden you cut to something that's actually in one of the the shows that she's in yeah and you you start like wait a minute is this happening or is this just in the show that she's like acting in Mm -hmm. yeah i was genuinely confused a number of times whether this was like uh filming or real life and there's like a yeah. lot of like other shows, like anime or otherwise, that do similar effects. But it's very obvious in those other shows, like this is obviously not happening. Mm-hmm. But in this mm-hmm. show, you know, you actually don't know until the end of the scene whether it's real or not. Yeah. Or even yeah. the end of the movie. Like there are some scenes where they still like you're still not sure if yeah, they did happen sure. in reality <laughs> or in the like fictional movie they were making. It's like what is real? Yeah. What is blue? What does blue mean to you? What is perfect blue? <laughs> what is blue and why is it perfect? Why is your blue more perfect than mine? Whoa. For a um, movie called Perfect Blue, there's shit lot of red in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right? Red. Um, so there is, there's one particular scene I wanted to talk about before we move on to sound design. Um, and it's, it's a scene that's kind of become iconic for this particular anime film and just in anime in general. And that's a scene of okay. the main character, Mima, where she's sitting in her bathtub and she just pokes mm. her head out of the water and starts screaming. Um, so that, good. It, yes, it's it's something that's been seen in anime a couple of times since then as well. But it's also something that Western media, particularly a, um, uh, a Western director named Darren uh, Aronofsky, Aronofsky. Has, yeah. who, he, he has taken that scene and he's used he's had it show up in two of his movies. Um, no, no, no. Notably, Requiem for a Dream and Black Swan. Black Swan, by the way, is heavily influenced by Perfect Blue. Have you seen Black Swan? I have, and I absolutely love that movie. Mm. I, I love Requiem for a Dream too. That's another mm. uh, of his films. It's just, I think it's very underrated, honestly. For years, I've heard the like he was influenced by Perfect Blue, but and now after seeing it like oh multiple God. times, like even more curious to check out his movies. Our next watch party should be Black Swan. In both of those movies, both Requiem for a Dream and Black Swan, um, there are scenes where the characters do the exact same thing, where they're just sitting in water and they put their head underneath and just start screaming. I feel like that's a good way to drown. You, know, you just <laughs> choke on the water and die. 
It's also a it's also a really great way to show off that the character is just having this mental break. I mean, honey, what happened to screaming into a pillow? She got to be extra. She got to just get completely <laughs> naked, get into the bathtub, and then scream. I mean, also, don't I mean, you I feel don't sometimes like getting completely naked and screaming inside a bathtub. Um, though? I mean, that's right. <laughs> that's when I'm feeling happy. Oh my. Oh okay. One last thing though before we move on is I also want to talk about um there's very obvious nudity in this movie. <laughs> oh, very much so. Um there's a lot of really heavy subject matter in general. Yeah, I I just wanted to point out the nudity because it, it's all completely uncensored. Um and it's it, compared to the kind of nudity you see in today's anime, it seems like it, it's borderline like I don't know what you would call it. It's not like a JV, but it's not that far off either. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Like, can I gush for a second about one very specific thing? Yeah, sure. Like we're talking about like cinematography. Holy shit! So in the first scene, there's this one specific shot where it cuts to that stalker character, and like you see, you see mommy's performance from his point of view. And she's like, it looks as if she's dancing on like the palm of his hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That specific shot is probably my favorite shot like ever. It's so <laughs> good, and there's so many examples of this type of like shot in this movie. I love it. For a yeah, it's, it's great like, shot framing. Such, yeah, like Khan had such a good eye for this shit. Like it's incredible. For a second in that scene, I thought he was like bending his neck, and I thought he was like trying to get like an upskirt, and that. But then I figured it out. That that's not what he was yeah. doing. Maybe that was what he was mm. doing. Who knows? Maybe. But that yeah. shot of just her dancing on like the palm of mm-hmm. his hand is like it's so like warm oh. shifts. It's so <laughs> good. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh let's move on to the, the sound design. Um very simple in terms of the sound design, like a lot of stock sound effects, just nothing really to write home about, I think. Um I just mean basic. I like the like <laughs> Uh, are we talking about specific sound design or just like the soundtrack as well? Well, I was I was uh, referring specifically to just the sound design. Honey, the only one who cares about sound design is John. <laughs> I know, I know. No, sound design I wanted is to awesome, mention but it, it's just no. The sound design is great. It, I mean, there's not like in this movie there isn't something specific. Like, it's okay. It's like it's no. It's it's done well. Like as if it doesn't detract from the experience. It amplifies it very. Simply, I guess. Um, I, I mean, you, you mentioned the soundtrack itself. Like, there's not, besides the, in the beginning where you have, like, the idol singing and stuff, um, there's not a whole lot of, uh, the, like, the tension track background is music. is really good. I do like the tension tracks. This yeah, movie. but you only get like those till, you only start getting those, like, halfway through the movie, which I think is actually good because, like, for the yeah. first half of the movie, it, it's, it seems just like you're watching someone who's trying to change careers and she's finding it really stressful. And it's, it seems very grounded and real. But then you get to the, the mid part and, you know, through the end, you get that that uh, that OST that builds up with these very nice, these very strings, violins. Like, you get the sense of tension. And it is stressful. It gets super stressful near the end. It does. But I do appreciate all the the city pop and stuff we get throughout the movie from time mm. to time. For like, when there, there's like the photo shoot she has, and there's like this very poppy, city pop type of song in the back. It's 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 nice. Yeah, I do like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, something to note um, is. I mean, we don't really talk about dubs that much in our movie reviews, but one thing I did want to point out is that if you do watch the English dub of this movie, which is okay, I mean, it's not great, but one thing the English dub did do was it replaced the original Japanese music that was in the film with English counterparts. And I don't know if that's Wait, necessarily what? a good or a bad thing. I guess it kind of depends on your perspective, but I wanted to throw that out there. You've watched it once? In, I, I didn't even know it had a dub. It yes, a dub. It, does, it does have an English dub. It's not great, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> not bad. Um, but it, it, it is 
interesting in that that sense that they did replace the Japanese music with English music, which they usually don't even bother to do that anymore in um, in English dubs. Though what they'll do is they'll usually just keep the Japanese music in and just add subtitles over the music. Mm. Okay. Or they'll have the um, the English dub actors sing a translated English version of the Japanese song, which is usually not that great. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to mention it because it's one of the little quirks of, of this movie's English dub. Well, um, as for the Japanese dub, which is the only dub I watched, um, I really like the voice acting, especially for the scenes where there were actors, like, with... <laughs> Where there were, like, in-character act Because this is about, like, celebrities. So, like, when there were in-character yeah. actors, like, filming yeah. a, a movie, mm-hmm. um, I liked how they really did sound like actors because they flipped between when they were acting for the movie and then when they were, uh, you know, not filming and just, like, bullshitting around. And then the switch between them was really cool. It was very good acting for the actual voice actors. Um, yeah, and also the the main character when she was freaked out, she she got really freaked out. Well, I like her her yeah. freaked yeah. out voice was uh, very intense and believable. Yeah, oh for sure. And what you said is like a really again just a really good contrast to her because she throughout the movie, whether it's in character in like the fictional movie or like in her day to day, it seems like she's re- maintained that same like voice. Which adds to again you questioning like what's going on? Is it real or is it not? It's she's great throughout all of it. Mm-hmm. I was just yeah. about to say like yeah she has good screens, but and and the thing that I that show just said about the when the the characters who are you know being are actors in the in mm-hmm. the movie are in their acting phase or what, whatever you want to call it they're being actors in character I, I, yeah they're they're in character i really respect the the voice talent that must have been required to do that because you're having to essentially act as though you're two different characters simultaneously mm-hmm. because you're you're portraying someone who is an actor who has a personality and then you're portraying the character that that actor is playing in your fictional movie i always think it's so talented when actors portray actors because when it's done yeah. right, it seems sure. so complicated to me. Like, my mind is blown. Like, how did you act that? That's so intense. <laughs> I do. I like that. Especially when it's done well. It's, like, it's something really amazing to behold, mm-hmm. honestly. Uh, so I just, kudos to the, the voice actors who were actually playing the actors in the movie. Yeah. So, uh, moving on from that, uh, shall we actually talk about the, the narrative itself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, we're not going to be talking about spoilers, but I do want to talk about some of the themes that uh, this movie does touch on. And we've already mentioned some of them. I mean, the the movie itself follows a main character who is, or at the start of the movie, is a pop idol. Uh, or she's part of a pop idol trio. Um, and she's trying to move on and get into acting uh, seriously. And that's kind of what you follow her doing going from being sort of this upstart idol to an actual actor who wants to get bigger and bigger roles. And you see the process of dealing with fame, dealing with a fandom, um, stalking, which we've also mentioned. Um, and and it also, dealing with her personas of the past. Like yeah, and, past and, yeah and dealing with mental illness, too. To some extent, yeah. It's... Do you, do you guys feel like this movie is even more relevant like now more than ever like because now we have like in the way that now we have like this whole like internet space filled with all these like internet famous people i i I think i understand what you mean like the most average person can become famous overnight exactly and it's like and the moment someone like that becomes famous like to all of their followers they're seeing a certain persona like think about like all these YouTubers, right? Like you're like watching us? a video Not of them, us. and it's sort of a persona. No, but it, it's it is it's kind of chilling because it's. I feel like this movie is is super relevant in that mm, aspect. Honestly, I think that I mean there's some parallels, but I feel like that form of celebritydom is a bit different. But you're still like you're still viewing someone like like that. 
okay, let's say for example, watching a YouTube video of someone's like writing an essay or whatever, like that's not necessarily them in real life. It's like a sort of a persona, like mm -hmm. for better or for worse, I'm viewing only one aspect of that person, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it still goes back to the theme of like, because throughout the movie, the main character, Mommy, she basically like is. I like how you keep calling her Mommy. It's Mima. Mima, never mind. <laughs> Honey, she's kind of reversing the vowels. Let, let him have his Yeah, I know, Japanese right? Mom. Anyway, she's haunted by like, the, like herself when she was an idol, a persona of that, right? And it's an aspect of it that a lot of people know, but they don't know the real Mima, right? Oh, yeah, because you and see her when she looks in mirrors and stuff, you actually see, she sees her idol, like, her she's in her idol getup. Yeah. I guess, but, like, I don't know, when you see, like, musicians on stage, like, who thinks that that's them in real life? Like, you know that it's a performance. What are you talking about? Like, fucking Alice Cooper, right? Like... People will claim like, yeah, when he's off stage, he's like the nicest person. But then he gets on stage and he's got snakes and just screaming like, get your fucking hands off at people. And like, you know, like he like. I guarantee you show doesn't have a fucking clue who yeah, Alice I Cooper don't. is. <laughs> I just oh replaced God, that damn. name with a name I knew, like Marilyn Manson. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, she, yeah, sure. That's another good example, right? I mean, like. What, but like, I don't think Marilyn Manson is a crazy person off no, thing, but it's not that. that uh, whatever. But there are. I, don't know. I think. Okay, I think but Natalia the thing is, is okay. To say. The thing that you brought up is that the thing about YouTube is that I do, I do believe that the person off screen is exactly the person I'm seeing. Whereas with normal celebrities, uh, I don't believe that. I know it's not true, but that's what like I subconsciously believe. I didn't say that it's like they're automatically a, a crazy person. I'm saying like, because like the point isn't that she is a crazy person. Like that's not the point I'm saying. Like for example, as we have the stalker character who sees Mima as only the idol Mima that he knows and loves and adores. And whenever there's like throughout the movie, like she goes on to be in a movie, and there's like all of these photo shoots that she's doing. There are like certain aspects of her that become public, and he's like furious at it because no that's not he's Mima right that's not yeah her. like mm -hmm. that, that's, that's he even comes up with the name for, it. for he yeah comes up with the name like, Mimania <laughs> yeah and it's super ap like relevant for today I think that's super relevant I think I I, I understand what Natai is saying like I think I think Chilling there are a lot so of relevant. people who are fans of like content creators on on online today who will conflate what they see like the the person they see in the content that they make with the actual person like i know there's a lot of streamers who are very very true to themselves but there are also streamers out there who play a character while they're streaming yeah like they're not the same person when they when that when that stream ends or you know whenever that the the camera stops if they're like a youtuber like they're a completely different person off off offline like I, I understand it. Like, there's a lot of people that aren't, but there's also a lot of people that are. So in a way, yeah, I think Natai is right. It is somewhat more relevant today. It, it was relevant then. Let's not be. Let's not kid ourselves. And it's still relevant to like prof, quote unquote professional mm. uh, celebrities today. I just feel like it has taken on new media and in relevancy with how yeah. like today is like media and celebrities are like we view them. Right. I I just find it super fascinating. It's like. Yeah. And also, like, it's easier It's easier to uh, – I don't think easier might not be the right word, but I'm going to use it anyway. It, I think it's easier today to build a more diverse fandom than it ever was before simply because yeah, of the internet. It, and, like, there's, yeah. all, there's almost this unspoken um, expectation that as, like, a content creator, you're supposed to have control over your fandom. And, I mean, in, in a way, I guess you could say that about celebrities too, but – nothing could be further from the truth like you can't control what your fans are going to do if they go out and stab someone in your name like how are you going to control that i mean unless you tell them to yeah well tr true i mean not crazy circumstances notwithstanding i think it's like really interesting to talk about like in the past year i've seen some videos about people talking about this concept like parasocial relationship of how some uh, content creators for example on youtube will create this sort of relationship with their audience like sort of pretending like they are friends 
but mm. let's not kill ourselves. Like, no, they're not friends, not even close. I mean, he's a guy on YouTube and you're just view, watching a video. You're not, you don't really know the guy, right? And again, it's like when you watch this movie, it's like you have this character who is like, he's talking this idol and he, his entire world is her and he's like worshiping her and he'll do anything to like, like that he deems that is right for her, you know, and it's, and it goes to really dark places really, really quick. It's, I, I just find it interesting. I think what we might be saying here to different degrees is that the, some of the themes that this film does touch on are still relevant today. And there's just as timeless as ever. And they may still be relevant 50 to a hundred years from now. Like, I think there's still going to be people who maybe get fame that don't know how to deal with it. There's always going to be people who have to suffer from stalking. There's always going to be people who have to deal with crazy fandoms. Um, I think that's just why I found this movie so disturbing because it's I found it so relevant today mm. more than it probably was back in the 90s, right? Yeah, I, I definitely can see where you're coming from and I, I do agree. It's great. <laughs> um, I like how we just spent almost the entire time just talking about the actual themes and nothing else about the narrative quality of the uh, <laughs> the, the, the movie. Oh, it, it just, it, that's just like the most fascinating aspect of it to me but like that's not to diminish the re- like the like the movie itself because it is fucking awesome it's yeah. great like again, i love it <laughs> yeah uh one thing i did want to ask is what did you guys actually think about how this movie was paced because i've heard some people say that it's it's kind of in some places it's really slow paced and in other places it's really fast paced i thought it was fine like it ramped up like as i said it just ramps up the more you like, you get into it like the mm. intensity ramps up and like the, you get more confused and more stressed about what is real, what is not. And then when the ending comes, you're like, oh, OK, it sort of clicks together. And and yeah, a lot of stuff happens. I, I, don't, mm. I mean, in the yeah, middle, it was good. There were a lot of jump cuts and it was maybe a bit much. I don't know. Mm. I appreciated them. They were a bit. One, yeah. One thing. One thing that got, I know that when we we did the watch party in our Discord server for this, and one of the people who was watching along with us was also confused during one of the parts where it seems like the same scene repeats itself three times. Yes. Um, yes. And like it's it was great. slightly different each time, and and you know you as an audience member were like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Well, I don't mind that. I it just it. went. I it went by so, so quick. Much. They just cut those scenes together so quickly compared to all the other scenes. It's a bit jarring, but I mean, mm. that was just a minor complaint. It, I think it makes sense, and like for her, it's jarring as well because she's just losing her mind. It's like, what is even happening? I guess so. I don't know. I've seen. I mean, I've seen like similar sort of really fast jump cuts where I wasn't jarred. It wasn't jarring. Maybe because I feel like. It was more of like a montage kind of thing, and maybe if they had like a background mm. track to it, it would have felt more like it was signified that like we're gonna go fast now and then we can slow down later. I don't know, it just caught me off guard. Fair enough, fair enough. I I think that's yeah. actually a really good criticism, especially of the middle bit of the movie. There are some people who say that there are way too many jump cuts in this movie, and I can no, see where no, those people are coming, coming from. <laughs> oh dear. That's like an appeal in this movie, I think, right? Like, I, I mean, yeah, I personally, so yes, I think it is. Is to like yeah. confuse you. Yeah. As as is many of Satoshi Kon's movies. I mean, just watch Paprika. You won't oh, know what the fuck is going on until the end. I was like watching it with a group. I, I was I was going to ask like, how did you? How was watching it, like as a group? So wait, this Alex movie? was the only one who was in the watch party yeah. of, of us three. Yeah, the, it, it was directed at Alex. Yeah. Um. So I, I mean, I I enjoyed it. Um. I, we were. I think there were five or six people who watched it along with us. Um. And I, it was interesting because we got to talk about it throughout the whole movie. Um. Especially the part where people were confused. I'm like, we just just give it a second. You'll figure it out. But yeah, I, I definitely feel like this is a kind of movie that um, definitely warrants discussion, especially during the movie. Um, mm. Mostly because it is kind of hard to keep track of, especially your first watch through this. This is also a movie that like you get more uh, more from it after multiple watches. I think For I definitely sure. got For more sure. from it the second time I watched it. 
I had yeah. some complaints yep. the first Same. time that made a bit more sense the second time. I did want to talk mm-hmm. about how, like we said, the premise of the movie is that the main character is an idol, and then she moves on to acting. So that premise is inherently uh, like tr- entrenched in Japanese culture because like, their Japanese idols and Japanese actresses are, are a bit different than what we would get from the West. Um, cause like you don't expect an idol to have a, you know, she was having money problems, well, quote unquote money problems, which is kind of weird because Japanese idols are like small time compared to Western idols. Sure. And I mean, the biggest, uh, sort of culture rift for me was that when she moved from doing idol work to acting, um, she got more risque roles um Mm. and the first time i watched that i didn't understand why that was such a big problem because there's so many hollywood actors that are like respected and do like really risque scenes so i'm like why is this an issue but again like japanese idols are like supposed to be pure and virtuous and then you know i guess contrasting that with um the risque scenes that she was doing i could see that being um problematic for her and stressful yeah and yeah but then you see like how others view it it's like it's very reflective of the culture in japan where it's like as you said like they're not supposed to be dating people they're supposed to be like pure and you know or then when the fans see her with like after doing the photo shoot and the fucking very specific scene that she's supposed to do it's very much like it's interesting how everyone's reacting to it. it's like oh what has she done it's like no you know very reflective of the japanese culture mm-hmm. yeah i i completely agree like me me and john have talked about it because we kind of are into idols in in a way uh but <laughs> VTubers. well I, yeah i get well vtubers are nice and VTuber, vtubers are kind of like idols yeah but for for many many years although i do think this is slowly changing in japanese culture like you had to act a specific way to be an idol otherwise your fan base your quote unquote fan base would excoriate you for it like if you were if you were known to be dating someone as an idol like you're fucking out uh god forbid you be caught sleeping around with people too like you're definitely out then i mean we see but that a I def- little I think, yeah. I, with western um, celebrities where like everyone will complain or like talk shit when they when western celebrities start dating like all the I, I guess magazines. I think you find that bit, find like, that a bit more, more strict in Japanese culture I think you find that more so with um, younger celebrities really? than with older ones though especially because younger celebrities do tend to have a younger fan base I feel it really just depends on the celebrity like mm. I suppose you're, that, that may be true as well it's a child anyway. possible it's entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so to wrap this up, uh, let's give a, a numerical score to this uh, movie. So for each of us, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'll give this a nine out of 10. I think, yeah, there's some stuff about this movie that's really, really dated, particularly its art style. Um, but I think as we've discussed, I think a lot of the themes that it discusses really hold up even in, even by today, uh, as Natai mentioned, are still even may even be more relevant today than they were back when this movie uh, came out and I think largely uh, the aspects of this film especially it's it's technical stuff does hold up even if it's uh, art design uh, doesn't and I think it's, it's cinematography is, is absolutely brilliant like it's Satoshi Kon yeah. I mean it's just Satoshi Kon and his Satoshi Kon best so I give it a 9 out of 10 yeah. Nittai um, agreed it's, I think it's a 9 out of 10 for me closer to an 8 but it is a 9 it's yeah everything that you said and more it's just absolutely beautifully directed i love the i love so many shots in this movie just are like perfect (laughs) um yeah direction is incredible editing is amazing um thematically is very 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 interesting to talk about um it's yeah just an incredible movie i think anyone who is even like has a slight interest in directing and filmmaking in general whether like you're into anime or not should definitely 
check out Satoshi Khan's movies because they're just something something else, man. But yeah, yeah, it's an hour time. All right, show. So I really like stories about celebrities. I really like psychological hoarder, horror and whores. I thought you better say hoarder. Hoarder, You're a psychological horror, horror. and hoarder. whores. All of them. Whoa. And they have... <laughs> this This movie has all three. So, I mean, what can I complain about? Um, but no, yeah. So it takes those boxes for me. Um, also, like you said, the directing and the acting are really well done. Definitely appreciate that. Um, but I hate movies. So we have eight out of ten. <laughs> for for you though, that's a very respectable. That is very story. high for a movie. I hate movies. Um. Well, for you in in general, that's a respectable. <laughs> uh, yeah, score that's Because true. you are notorious for your. In my yeah, you, you are notorious oh, well, for giving I, out like fives. I, I thought you were you were about to say I'm very hard. Whoa. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Not not for like, perfect where is blue it balls. Going with this? We're not hard for blue balls. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, that's going to be it for our Perfect Blue uh, review here. Zero uh, out of ten. Not enough blue in this movie. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, uh, as I promised, uh, our next movie review is going to be one that was chosen by John. Even though he wasn't here today, he has already told us what he wants to do for the next movie review. And it is another anime movie classic. And we are going to be reviewing Akira. Oh, God. Akira. Yeah. It's going to be good. That might get a low score. I'm not going to lie. I've I never seen, seen Akira before. before. I'm, is this this is going to be my first time watching I'm really excited to finally sit down and watch it. Show? What? I've never seen it. Wow. So we're going to get at least two people who have never seen it before. Uh, John and I have both seen it before. However, it's been many, many years for me. I think the last time I watched it was like in 2000 and five 2000 late that's a long time ago um so yeah it's it's definitely been a while for me so i i'm looking forward to this it's it's one of my favorite anime things ever um so definitely look forward to that um and well, we might be doing a uh, watch party in our discord server for that as well so like i mentioned before uh check the description below to uh, join us there for when that happens and to be notified whenever we do uh, or whenever we have other reviews coming up but that's going to do it for yeah. this uh, yeah this is going to do it for this uh, perfect blue review so thank you all there for dropping in to listen to us talk about this check the description below to find links to anime club after dark on twitch on social media and like i said on discord check out our merch store and our affiliate links as well any purchases you make there do really really help us out with that i have been your host alex and we will see you next time say good night guys good night perfect blue balls hey